Hi, my name is Tim. In this video, I'm going to guide you through the proper procedure for diagnosing a faulty contactor for the commercial air conditioner. Now first, click on the system selector switch to ensure that the thermostat is calling for cooling. Doing this will also turn down the temperature setting. Click OK on the procedure guide and refer to the procedure guide after each step. Next, we're going to take a brief inventory of which electrical loads are operational. And we can see here that the indoor fan is running. So we're going to click yes on the procedure guide and we're going to proceed to the outdoor unit. And when we get to the outdoor unit, we can see that neither the compressor nor the condenser fan motor are running. Now, that means both of these motors are de-energized. Now, before we go any further, let's take a look at the outdoor unit wiring diagram and come up with a list of possible causes of the malfunction here. Well, if you look on this diagram, there's actually nothing other than the main power coming in outside uh, that's common to both the compressor and the condenser fan motor. So it's possible that we have uh, no power coming to the outdoor disconnect. But if we go to the indoor unit wiring diagram, we can see that the contactor coil right here at the bottom right, when energized, will close these contacts up top here, the three sets of contacts. Again, this is a three-phase compressor motor, and it's going to require a three-pole contactor. So it's possible that this contactor coil is faulty, but it's also possible that any of these switches in series to it are faulty, meaning the three overload switches, the internal thermostat, one of the pressure switches, or possibly the thermostat contacts could be faulty. So we're going to narrow this down and we're going to eliminate each of these. Now, once you've clicked on the procedure guide that the fan motor is off and that the compressor is off, we're going to remove the control panel. Okay, once we've done this, click OK in the procedure guide. And we're going to just verify that the compressor is not cycling on a safety switch. So basically take your amp meter and place it at one of the leads going to the compressor. Now you can do this by simply clipping the jaws around this black wire right here that leads to the compressor. And we can see we have zero amps here and it doesn't appear to be cycling on and off. We've got a straight zero amps, which verifies that the compressor's not coming on at all, along with the condenser fan. So is the compressor cycling? No. Our next step now is to find out which of those previous components that we talked about, the contactor coil, the safety switches, as well as the thermostat is at fault here. And probably the easiest place to start is right at the contactor coil. Do we have 24 volts at the contactor coil connections, at the yellow connection here on the left, and at the blue connection here on the right? And when we do this, we do in fact have 24 volts to the contactor coil. Now, if you're not clear about that, let's take the diagram back out again and take a look. We can see that our meter leads are placed right at the contactor coil, and we're receiving 24 volts there. So that verifies that all these safety switches, as well as the thermostat, are closing their contacts, and the contactor coil is receiving power. Now, this most likely means the contactor's faulty. So go to the procedure guide, and we do measure 24 volts, so we can click yes. Now, I would inspect for loose connections before you go any further, and it appears that all our connections are secure, and you can rotate or zoom in if you need to to get a better look at that. So are there any loose wires? Well, no. Now, our next step is we're going to check to see if we have 240 volts coming to the line side of the contactor. Now, this is here at the bottom, so we're going to drop our leads at L1 and L2, and we have 240 volts there, so we can click yes on the procedure guide. Now we're going to check L1 to L3. And we have 240 volts there as well. Again, click yes. And last but not least, we're going to check the other phase of power, L2 to L3. And we have 240 volts there. So we do have line voltage coming in at the contactor. So we're going to click yes on the procedure guide. And our next step is to check the load side of the contactor. So we'll begin by checking T1 and T2 which will verify if the contacts are actually closed. And we have zero volts here. So those contacts, or at least one of those contacts, are not closing. So we're going to click no on the procedure guide. And we're going to kind of determine at this point that we have power to the coil. So it should be energized, and it should have pulled those contacts in. So our contactor is going to be the fault here. So we're going to turn the disconnect off, click OK on the procedure guide, and we're going to replace the contactor. 
Now, on some larger contactors, you can replace individual components inside. So in that case, it would be necessary to do a resistance check of the coil to determine that the coil is at fault and not necessarily the actual contacts themselves. But in this contactor, it's small enough where it's just replaceable. It's not repairable. So since we had 24 volts to the coil and we verified that the contacts are not pulling in, we're going to replace the contactor. Click on it. Click Replace on the menu and we've replaced the contactor and solved the problem. Now, I would watch one full cycle of operation to ensure all loads are operating properly. But to start with, we're going to need to turn the power back on to verify this. And when we do this, everything comes back on. We put the cover back on the unit, close up the control panel, um, and we're ready to go here. Now, our last step would be to go up to the space and make sure the cool air is being received. And it is, as evidenced by this blue graphic out of this ceiling diffuser. Uh, I would also look at the filter and just change it if necessary to provide a little add value on the service call. If you need to review any of these steps in this procedure, simply click on this top left icon and you can review each of the steps in the process. Good luck on all your future service calls, and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Do you want to try 3D simulations and VR HVAC training yourself? Then visit interplaylearning.com to start a free trial today.